go. Hi everybody. This is Tim and Christina for Living With MS in Tenerife. And I know we haven't done a balcony balcony. I'll start that again. Balcony a balcony banter, banter for, for a while. And, oh, what's this? What's that chocolate? Do you want half? Now, mmm, mm. raw cabbage. Yeah, very good. Did this is lockdown. 50, 50, I don't even know what day it is. 50, whatever, what day is it? Saturday, Sunday. Saturday. Okay. So it must be 56. Lockdown 50, 56. And we do, as we know, we don't know what day it is, and nothing new changes because we stay at home all day unless I go shopping. We haven't really done anything. Shoulder, I'm getting some decent painkillers, so that's fine. What else? Nothing really, right? No. Been talking to our family by Skype and uh, FaceTime, and we haven't really done much. Tomorrow is Mother's Day in Germany. Ah, yeah, tomorrow's Mother's Day in Germany. So, uh, so I'm going to call my mom tomorrow. Well, that's a good idea on Mother's Day. Unfortunately, my mother's looking down on us from heaven. But it's not Mother's Day in Britain. It's not Mother's Day in heaven either, I don't think. Probably not. No. Although I don't know. So anyway, so we had chicken tonight. Chicken in mojo verde sauce with uh, canary and potatoes. Dead easy to make. And a little side salad. Yeah, salad, salad. It's not home to tomatoes and radishes yeah and a little potato that was salad. Good. thank you thank you but i have been working on my podcast so those of you who've been following my podcast on uh, buzz sprout so if you go to aftercast dot buzz velva aftercast dot buzz sprout dot com then you'll see my podcast i've got two episodes up there one's just like an introduction like a teaser and the second one is an example of what i'm going to be doing in the future and this week, I, uh, I actually did an interview by Skype. So it wasn't a holiday maker, it was somebody who lives here. So um, if you want to go and check that out, um, it'll actually follow on after this podcast or after this, what are we doing now? YouTube video. Mm -hmm. It'll actually follow on from this YouTube. So if you carry on watching this video, it'll go into the podcast. And then I'll come back at the end and say something. So you've got to watch to the end, right? <laughs> uh, don't forget to link, uh, link to like and subscribe, share it, everything, because the, everybody says that, and I didn't know why. But it's because you need a 1,000 followers on YouTube before you can go live now. It used to be that they'd let everybody go live, but then idiots are going in in America and shooting people live or robbing people live or doing something stupid live. So now they say you've got to have a 1,000 people before you can go live on YouTube. So uh, we need, we got 300 and, well, we had 370 last night, but look, this morning we got 368, so two people gave up. <laughs> Went, no, 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 not for me, not for me. Uh, what else do we do? Actually, actually, literally nothing. I found a bottle of wine called Cancel. That's a good one. It I won't cancel it. It won't cancel it. But it's dirt, don't tell it's dirt cheap, it's one twenty-seven a bottle. I mean, it's cooking wine, basically, but... Don't get used to it. No, no, we tried it. And cheaper than beer. It's cheaper than beer. <laughs> uh, for the people who are interested, it's 12%. And it is made just south of Madrid in a place called La Puebla de Almoradiel for Felix Solis bottle for Felix Solis so in the comments below uh, you let us know that um, oh I do have news, we do have news yeah Monday we're going to phase one in the Canary Islands, Monday, we're going to de-escalation phase one. So we're in phase zero at the moment, where you're allowed to go out and walk and exercise your dog, and you can go out at certain times of the day. 
but phase one starts on Monday, which says you can still do everything that you could do before, but now there is no time restrictions for exercises, I think. And they're allowing um, shops, bars and restaurants to open under conditions. Now, the conditions have been published and been translated into English and been totally scrambled and sent on the internet, so nobody knows what's happening, obviously. I'm actually reading the Spanish version as we speak and translating the words I don't know uh, using Google Translate for one thing, but that's not very good, and another thing called Spanish Dict. Sounds really weird, but there you go, Spanish Dictionary it's short for, but SpanishDict.com. And I've got the app on my phone. And that gives you examples. So basically you can work out the nuances of, uh, of Spanish there. It's not just like Google Translate, you know, my plate is on the moon type of thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Monday we start with phase one. I'll um, update you next week with how that's going. But it does mean that um, restaurants and hotel terraces can open. Now... I'm not. Sh I'm still not sure whether it's allowed bars to open. Uh, it all it says is restaurant and hotel terraces. So whether a bar terrace is a restaurant terrace, I don't know because in Spain they've got these shields stuck on the wall to say what you are, and if you're an R, you're a restaurant, and if you're a BC, you're a bar cafeteria, and if you're something else, you're something else. An H, you're a hotel. Well, that's a good one. But. Um, yeah, so at the moment it's just saying that restaurant and hotel terraces can open. So not inside, just outside. And you can only use half the tables, and the tables are going to be two metres apart. And then there's weird things like uh, if you go out, you, it used to be you go for a walk, you couldn't stop and talk. And now phase one says you can stop and talk, but you've got to keep two metres away from everybody, unless you live in the same house. Thank you for that. Thank God for that. Uh, but now it says you can meet people that are not in your household, but you've still got to stay two metres away. Then in the next breath, it says that ten people can meet. So that means there's going to be ten people, each with two metres, and then you can meet in the house as well, which means if there's going to be two metres between you, that means it's your one metre and their one metre away. So basically a circle of one metre around your diameter. Is it diameter? No. Radius. So 2 pi r is, that's going to be 3.2 square metres per person. So that's 32 square metres of a, of a house, if you want 10 people. I, we don't know, we don't know. The other thing says is that you can have up to 10 people on a table. Now the table's 2 metres apart and you fill half of them, or do you just take half your tables away and the rest you've got two metres apart? Or is the tables two metres apart and every other table's empty? Again, it's not clear. So... I think I'll just stop talking about this uh, until it's actually actually it's been translated. Crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. I mean, they're doing it nicely. They're sort of saying, look, we're good in the Canary Islands. We've got one of the lowest uh, incidents of... Um, of coronavirus in the in the whole of Spain, we did a great job because we had some of the first um, people from Italy coming over, and we locked down the hotel for two weeks, and that was the best thing we ever did because it just didn't spread that big. I mean, in Adeje where we are, Adeje is a, like a county, fifty thousand over fifty thousand people, and we've only had twenty four cases in our whole county, so it's very unlikely to meet anybody with coronavirus here. And uh, of the 24 cases, now 28 cases in total, 24 are healed. We've still got four cases active, but they're in hospital in the north. And no deaths. So base and, and nobody has infected, been infected in Adeji since the 24th of April. But that is even, that it wasn't even in Adeji. It's just that they lived in Adeji. Their house was in Adeji, but they probably got infected in the north um, in the hospital so basically we're pretty good we're pretty good here there is very low chance of me going out and catching it although we're still washing our hands we're still doing all the the proper stuff aren't we we're staying away from people 
just needs common sense. It just needs common sense, you're right. It just needs common sense. So, um, as I say, at the end of this, there will be the podcast. And I'm going to do an extra intro for that. So, um, I'll just say goodbye with Christina. And then the next thing you see is the intro to the podcast from me. And then we'll cut to the actual interview. And then at the end, I'll say ta And uh, it'll be one of my longest YouTube videos ever. So, give it a like, give it a share. And don't forget to subscribe. Ring the little bell. So this is Tim. And Christina. <gasps> Stop. I've got to say hello to Lee. Did I say hello to Lee last time? Mm. I've got to say hello to Lee. Now, there's two Lees I know. One is the Mac Master, hi Lee. And the other is a poor guy that was supposed to come over and get married. And he's had to postpone it till September. Now, I don't know whether he got married or not. And he's just coming over in September, or whether he's actually postponed the wedding till September. The wedding. But the <laughs> wedding, read yeah. wedding. The wedding. The wedding. So, so we're going to say hello to Lee. And uh, this is Tim. And Christine. Yeah. Filling with MS Intendry, signing off. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to Aftcast Tenerife. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. And today, we're talking to Juliani Nendl, holistic mentor. Let's have a listen. Hey, Juliani, thank you for joining me today. How are you? Thanks for having me, Tim. I am really excited to be on your third podcast, I, I believe it is. And it is the third one, you're right. Yeah, so I've been listening to the first two ones and they were so convincing that I thought I must be on this show as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you came because uh, I was worried I wasn't going to get anybody to interview because we don't have any uh, visitors at the moment. So you're obviously no. not a visitor. Uh, no. Where are you stationed? Well, I live or I have been living in on Tenerife since I came here in 2003, so in June this year, it's going to be 17 years. Oh, my God, 17 years on wow. this island. And most of the time I've been living in Callao Salvaje, uh, which is in the yeah, southwest part of Tenerife. And, yeah, I love it. It's a lovely little village, and it has a lot of character, I, I believe. It's, it's really charming, especially our little beach area, which at the minute we cannot really use, but, but still it's nice walking past it and just imagining how it will be crowded again very, very soon, I believe. I hope so. <laughs> well, I think that's what our listeners are hoping for too. I've got some people that are following me on Facebook and YouTube and they're always asking, when are we going to open up again? I, I can't really tell them, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. it looks like we should be doing something in the summer. And at the end of the summer, we may be getting back to some sort of semblance of normal, if that's what we want. Yeah. And a lot of people are following up on, uh, yeah, on videos that are being published about the area here. Callao Salvaje has a lot of fans all in the UK, in Germany, everywhere, I think. The people are really happy to see videos published. They, they really consume it. And, and getting full of excitement and anticipation to return, I believe. Yes. In fact, one of my best um, performing videos is the one that I did about Kaya Savaki walking around the shops. Oh, see? You know, it's sometimes the simple things, right? Yeah. I so, mean, they, they love it. They love it. It is. It's, um, it's an amazing uh, place, but uh, I mean, all of the island has so much to offer, I believe. And um, yeah, when I came here in 2003, I actually did not start right away living in Callao Salvaje. I was working in hotel entertainment back then, entertaining people with kids entertainment and uh, sports activities and nighttime show performance and that's what I've been doing in uh, Costa Deje area. So you were a, uh, an an in the animation team? Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's cool. what it was, motivating people <laughs> to get wow. up from their sunbeds. 
<laughs> but that's a great way to see the island as well, is to come over and, and, and work, right? Yeah, exactly. So where others would spend their holidays, I'm working and sort of being part of their holiday and making their holiday even better. It was a great work. I, I was really into it uh, for a long time. I've been doing that job for five and a half years. I, I've been doing entertainment. And I think once you you worked in entertainment, you'd never quite really lose it, you know? It's something that's stuck in your in your personality and in your behavior, I think you try to bring it back to other jobs that you perform afterwards, my, maybe. Like, for example, after that, I've been working uh, also uh, quite for a while at uh, reception uh, in guest service. So um, that's something that you can still pick up on and use and, uh, yeah, make their holiday special in a in a funny way and dancing and cheering and and now at this moment right uh, right at this moment in time with the corona going on i think it's is very beneficial as well very self-motivating <laughs> to be able to look at yourself and give yourself a reason to get up in the morning right exactly and to dance around and uh, sing around i love uh, doing karaoke <laughs> <laughs> oh well it's a shame we don't we're not filming this <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> but it's a good way yeah and it helps a lot <laughs> staying on track <laughs> <laughs> so basically uh this podcast um, is going to be slightly different when it gets rolling with the tourists and i'm going to be starting asking questions about their hotels and where they go and any tips and tricks or what they yeah. like to do in the afternoons because it is uh aftercast tenerife afternoons and what mm -hmm. that means is that there is this lull between finishing the breakfasty brunch and getting ready for dinner. Where do you go to chill out? So is uh -huh. there any afternoon venue that you can imagine in all of the years that you've been here where you say, that's a great place to chill out on the beach or this is a great place to go for tapas or any tip that you might have for our listeners? I love going to the yeah, Costa Adeje area. The um, yeah, La Caleta area is a beautiful spot. I think there are nice little tapas bars and uh, you can just enjoy the sunset and or even the, the little beach area. The Playa La Enramada has this uh, new little... Um, what they call here uh, Chiringuito. But um, yeah, Costa Reche is pretty nice. I love going uh, to um, Los Cristianos. It's also a beautiful spot. Um, there are lovely, um, lovely bars as well and uh, little spots where you can just sit and enjoy the sun and yeah, just close your eyes and float, you know? That's I think the Los Cristianos is that area there is a myriad of different cultures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can pick and choose. Is there any sort of hidden gems that you that you would certainly recommend? Well, the the area of uh, San Telmo, there are restaurants, bars, um, and and this whole area of San Telmo is uh, is really beautiful with the view of the beach um, and the ocean. It's, it's lovely and stunning. Uh, so there you will definitely have uh, places where you can pick from. Whether you enjoy food or just drinks or both, there's plenty of uh, options to choose from. <laughs> I remember I going, San Telmo, I think, is that shopping area, bar area that is just near the port. Yeah, exactly. And if you're coming on the bottom um, road on the maritime walkway, it's after you come through the tunnel from yes. Los Cristianos to um, what's that beach called? Las Vistas, Playa Las Vistas. Yeah, Las Vistas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And exactly. the, the first time I went to that place, um, somebody recommended a tapas bar there. And the tapas bar was owned by a Dutchman. Okay. But they were really good, and uh, it was typical tapas where you ordered small plates, and he'd only allow, allow you to order two or three at a time, and then he would serve other guests, and then when you finished those, you could order more. Okay, but yeah. I think maybe when he first started, um, uh, non-Spanish would come in and just order a whole meal, 
And yeah. uh, then he'd be, he'd be bringing the stuff to the table and they'd, they'd leave most of it because they were full after the first two portions. Yeah. That's a very good way to do it. I mean, you know, that it's in just bringing the right amount and then if you want more, you can still uh, order more, you know? It's uh, not wasting, right? Right. So, but there's actually, in fact, now that you mentioned this, this restaurant, um, there is a very good, I don't know the name, but uh, they make fantastic caipirinhas in, with all sorts of flavors. But it's not just like flavor, it's real uh, fruit with passion fruit and with strawberry and lime. And they are really, really amazing, really amazing caipirinhas. And uh, at nighttime even, uh, it's quite a buzzing bar as well. That's in San Telmo as well, right? In San Telmo, yeah, and it has this Brazilian uh, flair to it, and then some, um, yeah, good vibes and a good crowd is always there. Would you recommend um, that people go to San Telmo on the street side or on the beach side? On the beach side, yeah. Okay, beach. so because I think on the street side they have the terraces pointing out the back, which is at the sea but they're about two or three stories up, right? Exactly. So down at the bottom, you, you have yeah the, the, the greater view, of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and at the back end is basically where you enter into the, the restaurants. So if you choose a restaurant you want to go to, then you would enter it um, more from the back side. Okay. And, yeah. But I think yeah. sometimes there are restaurants down on the bottom on the beach side that are not on the, yes. on the top side. As I know well. there's one yeah. called Goodfellas. Uh, in fact, the guy in our building uh, owns that. So shout out to Goodfellas. Okay. And, hey. <laughs> Good and, uh, but they don't have a, an entrance at the top. So And there's also a couple of bars, like the Tapas Bar I was talking about, that has a, an entrance at the top, but they don't have a position down the bottom. They just look out on the from the third floor. But, okay. Uh, but I think that going from both ends gives you two different sides of San Telmo. That's a, that's a great way to, exactly. to experience it. In fact, you could spend the whole afternoon there and yeah. evening. Which hotels would you recommend today? Well, today, uh, a hotel that is um, quite sustainable also, and they're doing a lot for the environment, is the Hotel La Pinta. And they are also in the uh, well, Costa Deje area going towards uh, Las Americas, La Pinta. That's just around the corner from um, the, the port, right? Puerto Colón. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah, okay. it, that's a great hotel. They have a nice uh, reception area with a huge aquarium inside. It's, it's beautiful. And they do... It's just a been lot renovated, of, right? Yes. And it, they do actually a lot in terms of, um, like, educating uh, the uh, the customers, their their guests, in terms of sustainability, and they offer also excursions on sustainable boat trips and such. So mm, that hotel is quite good. I also like up in the north the hotel Tigaiga, is a nice one. Is that in Puerto de la Cruz? Uh, yeah. So that one is uh, is a beautiful spot. I mean, mm, there there are a lot of uh, beautiful little city uh, hotels as well, you know? And sometimes mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the, the small hotels that um, come forward with, um, with change or they find it easier to adapt to, uh, to change because they are not really working with the, with the big companies where sometimes change can be very slow, right? So if you're in a chain, yeah, if you're in a, in a, yeah. a hotel chain, then change can be very slow, you're right. Yeah, so those uh, little hotels, um, I, I really enjoy going to Airbnb. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's fine with me. I, I mean, I, I love uh, booking uh, these because they, you find really unique places, unique houses, actually, uh, something that you would not find in hotels. I've been staying in amazing places here on the island, really far out, so far out actually that you didn't even have any Wi-Fi, <laughs> or only at a, like a certain spot in uh, in, the, in the house. So that's amazing to totally disconnect from all the reality. It's brilliant. 
So Airbnb, is it called Airbnb? A I R B N B. Yeah, Airbnb. Yes. Airbnb. That's okay. And then you, you can tour the island then. Yeah, you can um, just or just stay in the spot and chill out. Yeah, exactly. So in, on Airbnb, you have um, the the option to type in um, the city or the location you want to go to, and then all the options pop up, and then you just uh, book. I recommend what what I like to do is to do the um, instant booking. So um, so so that. Uh, gives you the option that um, that is definitely uh, secure that um, when you book the um, the host is not going to be able to cancel your reservation right okay so that's um, that's just a little tip instant uh, click the instant uh, book and then you have various the seats that you can choose from what uh, what you might need Wi-Fi or parking spot you know when you go by yourself that uh, your car can be stored not on the street or maybe better in a, in a parking space that's what I uh, I like uh, to go for and I've been staying in places in for example in uh, Icot de los Vinos they have uh, really great options there fantastic little cabins and pool houses as well it's a great way to explore other options on the island other than uh, hotels well that sounds great so would you recommend like a, a a week's holiday in a hotel and then book an airbnb for a second week maybe i've done i've done that in the us uh, plenty plenty of times uh, with um, with combining those two options actually so the first night uh, in an Airbnb and then moving on traveling to, to hotels or motels. So That here. sounds very adventurous of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, if you are adventurous, then Airbnb is an option. And you can either book it and you fly it separately or you can get a package holiday and then go Airbnb in the middle. Exactly. Whatever you feel like. Whatever you feel like. And where else do you love to go? Well, I like to go to Las Vistas too, but I go to the, um, a bar just near the ice cream parlor in the Centro Comercial uh, Vista Sur. Uh -huh. It's called the Sun King. And the only reason I go there is because, uh, as most of you know, I'm a, I'm a magician and I do a little street show. And oh. in front of this bar, the owner of the bar loves to see me and, and also the, uh, the PR. So okay. I go there and I do a little street show, then we sit down and have a drink. So I like that. It's, it's quite a nice place. It's very, I wouldn't say touristy, but there's a lot of pressure of the PRs to get people, you know, to get bums on seats. Yeah, that's but, right. Uh, that's where I like to go. It's a great view and you can watch the, watch the beach, watch the sea. Uh, you can watch the people going past. It's quite a large piazza area as well in a flare. And yeah. when I go with Christina, obviously, um, it's very wheelchair friendly. That's the most important, huh? Yeah, the maritime work walkway is fantastic. In, in fact, we did a, a video series on YouTube for that, uh, on the maritime walkway. That's great. Yeah, the, the Playa de las Vistas is very wheelchair friendly. It's, yeah, in fact, uh, they just built, I think two years ago, they built a wheelchair um, accessible beach part with a wheelchair to go in the sea so the socoristas will come and help you into a, a special wheelchair and push you into the sea so then they would definitely get one of those new badges where it's it's like one of the most uh, friendly beaches right yeah it's a great it's a great place and also you can get from the tourist information there you can also get a key to use um in the disabled toilets around around Tenerife Sur. I think there's five sp specific ones where you can get a key. And I think the key's tw uh, 20 euros, but you get it back when you leave. So you can get that from your hotel, I think. And where else do you go? Where else do, do you also visit inland? Uh, we do go up to Adeki town. Uh, I really like Adeki town because it's sort of old and oldy worldy. And there's one part right in the middle near the Ayuntamiento which uh, is also fairly wheelchair friendly, although it's quite steep. Um, and there's my favorite chicken place there, which is Oasis. Of course, of course. Everybody knows this one. Uh -huh. I love it too. 
it's amazing. It's a it's a great place uh, and and also very buzzing. And then um, I've been there for the Christmas parade for the Three Kings, and they do spectacular um, yeah events there, both for for uh, around Christmas time uh, or in January sixth, and then as well uh, for Easter. This year uh, it uh, was not possible to see it, but uh, I normally enjoy it very very much going there for Easter as well. Yeah, the big the parades, Christina doesn't like to, to, to mingle with a lot of people because sat in a wheelchair, she says she's ass height. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So she doesn't like that. But uh, Adeshi Council do actually film it and stream it live, and you can actually see last year's on their website. I think it's adeshi.es, A-D-E, Jota. How do you spell it? E-D, <laughs> I can't. A-D-E-J-E. A D E G, right? My wife, have you know my wife's German? And you're German, of course, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know that because J is J and J in Spanish and J in in English. I always get mixed up when I'm spelling stuff. Exactly. <laughs> I always get mixed up with the with the G and the J. Yeah. Uh, how J. How do you say Adeji? Uh, I say it like a, an H with a little bit of guttural throat. Adeji. Yeah. Adeje, Adeje. yeah, it's funny actually because it's like uh, the Germans, the Germans pronounce it ad Adeshe. Adeshe. yeah, Adeshe. <laughs> and, and The English would say Adeki. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and it is ad Adeje. <laughs> With an so a J is like an H in Spanish, right? Yeah. Exactly. And, and how about the G? Um, it, the next municipality to us is either Gia di Isora or Gia di Isora. I'm, no, I'm never sure. Well, it's Gia di Isora, Gia mm -hmm. di Isora, but it's only um, uh, pronounced like that because after the G comes the the U. Ah, okay. Okay, so the U I makes it uh, pronounced uh, Gi. Ah. All right. Whereas los los gigantes, you have uh -huh. uh, los gigantes, which is spelled uh, G uh, G I. Yeah. There, you pronounce the G as a like similar to the J. So it's Guia de Azora and los gigantes. Los gigantes. Los gigantes. So the second G is also a G sound. Yeah, because of the A. Gigantes. After the, yeah. Wow, that's a that. I've been here now since 2014, and that's the first time I've ever heard that I, I can now pronounce Adeje, Guia de Azora, and Los Gigantes. Los Gigantes, that's it. Bravo! Cool. Muchas Super. gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> We're coming up to 25 minutes now. Um, it's been great talking to you, but I'm not going to let you go just now. Tell me something about what you do and how people could maybe find more about you. Well, in 2018, I decided uh, to open up my own business as a holistic mentor. And um, I found through my own experience that um, sometimes in life you struggle with, um, yeah, with pain. Uh, you go through um, moments in your life where you just need some, some help from outside. Um, and you, you might not be able to cope uh, with, with your own pain. So um, I sought help in a, in a moment where I could not be dealing with, uh, with it anymore. And um, that, that is why I um, decided to become a holistic mentor. Um, I help people sort of um, through um, talking through um, conversations, I, uh, I help people transform their own ways of thinking. So um, I help them guide through their own thinking, um, guide them to better results in, in their lives. So they, um, they sort of, after a while, change their, mm, their behavior patterns. Mm, and ultimately, behavior is is what um, what guides you to uh, to better results in your life. Um, so you help people to help themselves, basically. That's it. Yeah, 
yeah, self self help is is a good word to use mm -hmm. to describe the work I'm doing. And yes, I'm I'm I mean um, I, I use um, the beach in Callao Salvaje a lot to go um, and uh, have talks to them um, directly at the beach because I find that um, that atmosphere and the uh, surrounding is very calming um, for them to to open up more in conversations. Um, I also go to to other beaches here around. Um, Tenery, but um, you can also contact me online. I um, uh, I do online sessions as well with uh, people all over the world, um, and that's what I'm doing. That sounds perfect. Do you have a website? Yes, it's julianenendel.com, and you can also um, follow um, things I'm doing on on my YouTube channel, also julianenendel. And um, there you have also some some videos about um, yeah about the area as well, uh, where I've been um, filming and giving uh, some well advice. I would not say it. I I, I just uh, speak uh, um, from my own heart, from my own experience, and um, yeah, you can see and enjoy both <laughs> the landscape and the advice. <laughs> That's the best advice when it comes from the heart. Yeah, definitely. That's what um, my philosophy is. It needs to come from the heart if you want it to work, right? <laughs> exactly. And we had a conversation the other day, and I remember that it just pours straight out. Oh, yeah, it does. What feeling is, if you don't feel it um, with your heart, then uh, it's not going to work, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Emotion is, in the end, what um, what makes you decide to go for something or or to just drop it, you know? That's perfect. <laughs> so we're coming near to the end now, so I'd just like to thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Talking about the, your life and what you've done here and how you've coped and all different things sounded really, really interesting. And our listeners, I think, will be better people for listening to that. Oh, I hope so. And uh, yeah, it's been a great experience. Uh, I cannot see you, but uh, it's been a, a great time talking to you. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it really, really much. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you next time.